All right. Hey, guys, this is Taryn uh, in Las Vegas at the Girls Inc. studio, and this is a tatter effect. This is my new uh, my new podcast that I started, and this is like, I think, our third, is it our third episode, Olivia? Yes, it is. Say yes in the mic so we can hear you. Yes, it is. <laughs> <laughs> we mic'd up Olivia for this episode. This is our third episode, and so we're not pros yet. You're not, we're not smooth like peanut butter. We're a little bit like chunky peanut butter right now. But uh, yeah, so, but we're having a ball and um, we've got lots of these stacked up. So I'm super excited. So, hey, so my guest today, we've got her all the way from uh, Northern California, like Redding. Writing area, kind of? Yeah. She is a PMU artist, uh, because, you know, we're going to be talking a lot of PMU on these uh, on these uh, episodes. So she's a PMU artist. Uh, she's super cool. She's tatted. She does kick-ass work. You really do. Kick-ass work. Who is it? Uh, uh, probably, let me see. Maybe, let me drop them a hint. Uh, if you follow her on Facebook, you know, the one thing they know about you, Tar, if they follow you on Facebook is what? Man, that I fish too much <laughs> and that my face is tattooed. <laughs> yeah, no, that you my love. distinguishing marks. Yeah, that you love fishing. Yeah. And you're tatted. Yep. And you do bit. kick-ass work. All right. That too. So Tar Smith, Tar Smith Cosmetics. Cosmetic Tattoo. Tattoo. Yeah. Northern California. Very creative name. Yeah. Creative name. <laughs> well, you know. I used to want to know what my name was when I first started yes. 20 years ago. <laughs> what? <laughs> I mean, what is it? it? Right. <laughs> Darling Faces. Oh, that's that sweet. was my name. Yeah, that's that sweet. was my name. That was my name. And my dad loved it. My dad loved it. He was, well, I was going back and forth between Girls Inc. and Darling Faces, right? And I ran it by my dad. My dad was like, well, you got to name it Darling Faces. You'll be the first darling on the World Wide Web. <laughs> you got to be Darling Faces. So, you know, he was so proud. It was an obvious choice. Yeah, it was an obvious choice. We named it Darling Faces. It was great. But then about three years into it, I started doing body tattoos. And I'm like, look, I can't be Darling Face and Body. That sounds like soap. <laughs> right? Like a soap and gel shop at the mall. So I went back to Girls Inc. And that's that's how I got my name. Oh, yeah. I love it. Yeah. So anyway, I like your name, Tara Smith Cosmetic Tattoo. It's simple to the point. I like, yeah, it's to the point. I like it. Well, I that's a cool last name. But isn't so... that you? Yep. Okay. Simple me. to the point. Yeah, I try okay. to be. All right. So you do PMU. Yes. Yeah. Hey, first of all, thank you for doing my podcast. I kind of just kind of sprung this on you a couple of days ago and you thank said, you yeah, me. yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you want to tell why for... you were really up here? Not to do my podcast. I just kind of hijacked you. I here getting removal done, which yeah. is why my face under my eyes, I have tattoos everywhere on my face, but under my eyes, I was getting removed or lightened. And that's why it looks a little poofy and strange right now. The process was not bad, though, at all. So Michonne you had Michonne remove yes. the dots under your yep. eyes. And I yeah. um, love them. Definitely just wanted them lighter. I've had them since I was 16. So oh, okay. I'm 30 now. 30 now? <laughs> yes, I know. I'm getting up there. We're all, girl, oh, we're all getting 31. up there. It's pandemic uh, 30. Yeah. So I'm over 40. 40. That's all I say. I'm there over 40. Yeah. I like that. All right, that's it. 30 now. Yeah. So, yeah, I just wanted them at least lightened, and um, I'm all the way in Northern California, but obviously you guys are removal queens down here, so. Yeah, well, it's our, down. that's definitely our jam. Yeah. We love it. So yeah. you had Michonne do it. Yes. She's super good. Super gentle. Did lift. Yeah. How'd it feel? It was not bad. I, I was so scared. I know I'm super tattooed, but I'm a chicken shit, and... I was scared and it was not bad at all. The not salt bath all. at the end was a little, a little, spicy. A little stingy, a little spicy. Yeah, yeah it is. Bad. Yeah. I, I love it when the clients say, Ooh, I feel that. That's stinging a little bit. Cause then it makes working. me, yeah, it makes me feel like yeah. it's working. Like if they don't feel that, then I feel like, what the hell? Okay, yep. It's not working. I'll blot it off, put another whole new coat of lift on there to I get know. it working. She kept applying it. I was like, yeah. Oh, man, I think it's in there, but. So you just want them a little bit softer, a little bit lighter? Yes. Okay. I mean, not completely gone? If they're completely gone, cool. But You're happy like, with my goal was to at least get them a little bit lighter. So. Okay. Realistic and you're leaving the other stuff. The name, what's the name above that eyebrow? Oh, it says respect. Put oh, some I, respect on okay. it. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah. So when we sat down, we, we, we've got a guest in the background. Her name is Callie. You know, yep. she's, she's way back the there in the background. But she, yeah, she called you Post Malone a minute ago. <laughs> that was cute. I was like, oh, because I'm always tired. No, it's all the face tattoos. <laughs> but I like it. I they, forget about them. <laughs> yeah, I like, I like your face tattoos. They suit you. Thank you. You're welcome. So, so you're here to stay. 
Yeah. Except for the dots. Right. They're getting Except out Except for here. the dots. The dots get out there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So are you going to add any more tattoos to the face Man, or are you done? I kept, Just the face. I said no like three tattoos ago. So, I mean, I, I could say no, but I might be lying. I might add some stuff around the border. I'm kind of getting closed in here. So yeah. we'll see. Okay. I, 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 I wanted some stuff on my face, you know? Yeah. But then I met my wife, Kat. I told you this a little bit earlier. Mm -hmm. So I met my wife, Kat, and, you know, she kind of made me. She's like, no. <laughs> she was like, mm -hmm. <laughs> we'll, like, um, together strategically pick and place your next Becca tattoos. Becca, put your name right here. Yeah. So, you're right, right. So I had to, like, beg her to get my new sleeve. And so her thing right now is just not on the face, not on the neck. That's what my mom said. Yeah. I was, like, so 16, like, like surprise. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Well, whatever. So, you know, I got, I got some stuff right here and I want it to kind of creep up and peep on my neck a little bit. I almost got her convinced to let me do that. So we'll see. All right. So you've been doing permanent makeup four years, four years, four years. Okay. So how, I know you have an interesting story on how you got into permanent makeup. Yeah. All right. Kind of. I'm all okay. We'll see if it's interesting. I started messing around with tattooing when I was like 15, 16. Like body tattooing. Body tattooing. Okay. Loved it. Yeah. Um, had my twins when I was 19. So I kind of, you know, that. that Twin one, boys, girls. One of each. One of each. They're nice. All right. Well, bratty sixth graders. Love yeah. them. Yeah. Um, so that just kind of got put on the back burner, you know, parenting and dealing with all that right. stuff. And then. I came across a chick that came into my town once in a while, worked at a tattoo shop and did permanent makeup and she did all types of weird permanent makeup. But I was like, that's interesting. I can get into that. Right. And, uh, started, like blush. Yeah. Did she do eyeshadow? Oh yeah. yeah <laughs> that's like so eighties. I'm, like, mm. I'm surprised people still do that. Like that's so eighties. Looking back, like, I'm like, there's no way in hell I would do any of that. Yeah. But it doesn't age well. I was like, Oh, how neat. You know, when you yeah. first hear about yeah. that, it's like, Oh, yeah. So I started looking into classes. I trained with uh, Jen Boyd before she was when she was training for a co for a company. Yeah. Like, you know, four years ago. Well, at least you picked a really good trainer right off the gap. But I've I took multiple classes with her. Yeah. She's, she's just not. She's not only like a stand up artist. She's like a stand up human being. She's the best. Yeah. She is the best. Her mom. I love, love her. You call her mom. Yeah. I do love very her. Very important. To Actually, me. when I was, was we're we're gonna collab on a project, mm -hmm. and I was looking for someone particular that like fit my jam and was badass and super skilled and super good and jen was up here hanging out with me and i was telling her what i was looking for we won't reveal it yet but um immediately she didn't have to think she was just like tar smith and i'm she's like yeah all right okay i've sent so many people her way too just because she's just such a quality trainer so. no she is i uh trained with her originally and then uh took a class with will anthony yeah after that for longer. another Another great yeah. artist. Great guy. Different teaching skills on both. <laughs> yeah. Almost cried a little. No. <laughs> Will made you cry? No, not at all. <laughs> I've witnessed Will make a few cry because yeah. we trained together. Not We've done me. some classes together. Not you. No. <laughs> you maybe you made him cry. Yeah. Because he, he he does. So I'm so he does. No, <laughs> no, he does. Yeah. Yeah, he's a little crybaby. He is a little crybaby. No, um so yeah, then I just kind of dove right in and just kept taking classes and learning. Okay. And, doing all that. And it's just been, you know, I worked seven days a week for the first three years, not because I had to, but because I wanted to, and I was just so into yeah. it. Yeah. So this last year I've like forced myself to take days off, but I love it. So. Yeah. So what was, what was, what was your, you know, lots of newbies, you know, and there's always a struggle. I mean, filling your book with clients, you know, you don't have any money at first, you're putting money out for like tools and products yeah. and classes so what you know did you go through the struggle like what was your struggle like i saved up for my class and i saved up i found out what licensing i would need uh -huh. where i lived before i even took the class right saved up for what i was going to have to pay for to get the room you know they have 400 bucks to come just look at your room and make sure it's okay yeah all that i looked into it first i think a lot of people just take this class and then they want to start and it's like oh but i don't have any money now to do all the stuff i have to do yeah so, um, so you saved, plan, you prepared, you saved. Bit, so you yeah. probably researched. I planned a little bit. Yeah. And then when I got into it, there was only really one other person where I lived doing it like really old school style. And, um, I've been busy since I started. I've been very fortunate and I've gotten a good reputation where I live. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing is just don't think that your class is the only and last thing you're going to have to pay for. Yeah. That's probably the cheapest part. Yeah. Right. You know? Right. I gotcha. So... 
And you're in Northern California. Far like, Northern. Okay. Redding. Is yeah, that? I'm like an hour and a half, two hours from Oregon. So Right. And it's a top. little country oh, yeah. bumpkin. Oh, yeah. Right, right. <laughs> you said it, not me. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'll say it. <laughs> I don't know if that's like a faux pas like nowadays. It. Can you say that word nowadays? I don't know. I'm a little rednecky, so. Yeah, okay. <laughs> right. Right. Well, like I'm gay. I can say certain words that straight people can't say. There you go. So, Okay. All right. Well, I got it. So was it hard finding clientele being in, you know, a little bit more of a, you know, country town? I think like microblading, especially was, which is what I started with originally was such a buzzword that because we weren't up and saying tattoo, Mm -hmm. even though it's a tattoo, right? um, people were like, Oh, I've heard about that. Like, I really want to try it, you know? So I just, I didn't have any issues, you know, but they still were like, oh, I want this because it's not like a tattoo. I'm like, well, it is, but yeah, you know, sure. Yeah. Whatever you want to think. Yeah. Um, so I didn't really have any problems with it right off the bat. I was so super, your book filled up pretty yep, good. Started making money busy. right away. Sound like that for everybody, especially yeah. it's super saturated. It's, industry. Uh, th- th- yeah, that's right. That's right. So. I started 20 years ago here in Vegas and I was probably the youngest one coming into mm-hmm. um, the Vegas scene as a permanent makeup artist. All, everyone else that was already here, they were a lot older than me. And I was a little bit different. I was tattooed and, you know, yep. and I was a little bit different. And uh, and I set up shop in a salon, like a 10,000 square foot salon. That's with, what I did. I was in the salon. Yeah, with like 50 yeah. or 60 hairdressers, nail techs, yeah. estheticians. It's great for getting clients. Yeah, it was great getting clients, you know. And I, and I But I definitely went through the struggle and I had to you know, hit the pavement and put flyers. Back then, we, we put flyers mm-hmm. <laughs> out. There was no, you know, Facebook or anything like that. But um, so let's talk a little bit about California. So California, you just did the live Instagram with me. We yep. gave away, you know, the uh, Girls Inc. Monthly giveaway. But um, it was a California artist who won the giveaway. And I was especially happy it was a California artist because they just opened up California. Yes. But from what I understand, not all of California has been shut down these last 10 months. Just the, the Southern California area. I was I, I think it's almost all of California was like that where I am. Um, it's very country, country folk. So yeah. we were shut down until about end of July. So we were COVID cases lower. They were lower. So we were kind of like, why are we, why are we on such right, a lockdown? Right. Um, but also everyone just kind of, they were over it, you know, and they were like, we don't really care what the state is telling us. So like, so they rebelled. Open. Yeah. So even though maybe they were supposed to be shut down, they yeah. were just like, screw it. They were just like with safety, safety precautions. Like, right you can open like you can't just keep you know and and i was shut down till end of july i didn't get any loans any anything any unemployment none of that so it was rough but the rest of california has you know just now opened that's so crazy yes i know yeah like 10 months you know and i didn't announce this before the podcast started but we are not in masks um but we, Kat and I came in and measured we are a little over six feet apart and i've been tested regularly And I know you have, we had that yep. conversation. So, um, all the guests that come on here, we're going to make sure that, you know, they've been testing all this stuff. So go. yeah, it's just what you got to do right now, you know, but, um, so, all right. So that's cool. So you started with microblading and how'd you like it? Did you like, it was mic- weird, you know, because when I, the, the idea of permanent makeup, when I, for, I thought it was going to be just machine, but then like something you know, you saw microblading again because it's very, very popular. Right. It was just kind of starting back then. And I was like, oh, that's neat. Yeah. So I always knew I was going to be doing a lot of machine work, but I started with microblading class. It was different. Microblading is really hard to do correctly. Right. Until you get the hang of it and you're like, oh, you know, it just clicks. Yeah. It could be so bad so easily, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, but when done right, it's a great procedure. When done on the right skin, on the right person. Yeah, I think that's probably the, it, don't you find it limiting? Like it's a yes. great art form, you know, but I, it's limiting. When I started, I'll be honest, I worked on anybody, you know, yeah. you're just, I, you just want to get going. Right. Yep. And thankfully those people that are, I'm seeing back now for like touch ups, I'm like, Oh, we're going to do a powder brow on you. <laughs> Not that bad, but it's We're going like, to cover that shit up. But it's like, you know, I'm like, oh, you weren't, you were not a good candidate. You know? Right, And there's right. a lot of that learning when you first start. Exactly. And I had a great teacher, and so I knew what, I knew, you know, don't do this on people who've had previous tattoo right. eyebrows. Like, a lot of people don't 
get that though and they just kind of work on whoever and they're like oh yeah no, this looks like well and i think some crap. people don't don't care either some people no. just don't care and i had a little bit of not caring right away i'll be honest yeah. like just because i wanted to practice i'm like i just yeah you know you might have wrinkly skin and you might not be a great candidate but i'm going to practice on you right now right that's why you're getting it for you right know, 100 bucks yeah when you first start um but over time doing it the right way yeah um learning who and who is not a candidate for it do you so think important. it's seeing your own work back and having to face it, which yeah. maybe kind of gets yeah, you to I mean, like, I, okay. I was lucky I've been pretty pretty good from the start. Like looking back now, I'm like, oh my God. But even, it's not even that bad. So right out of the gate, you were pretty good. Yeah. You were doing I've, pretty I've damn good brows. Yeah. You just, know what, Tara, you can tell. Oh, when you look at your work, no. I mean, if, if people aren't familiar with your work, they should go check it out. You do kick ass work. You. You're welcome. So, yeah, but seeing that first stuff back, it's really. Um, it really wakes you up a little bit. Yeah. You're like, oh my God. Yeah. You know, and I haven't ever done anything. I couldn't really adjust or fix yeah. or make no, it. No, you're look lucky. Great. You're lucky. You know, I've never had yeah. anybody be yeah. unhappy either. I'm yeah. just like, but as you get better, you know, you take more classes, which is so important. Yeah. Keep educating yourself. Yeah. I still take classes. Um, you know, yeah. You learn from your mistakes, I'll say. Right. So, <laughs> but, but you did cross over into machine. machine. So how long were you on micro braiding before you decided to get on machine? That's a good question. It wasn't that long. Well, not that long. Um, no, not at all. Um, man, was it in the same year? It was the first, it was in the same year. Well, I think that's okay. Don't you think that's okay? Oh yeah. So well, some people have the mindset, well, you need to master this and get really good for it before you jump on the other no, thing. And I don't think you should do like a class where you learn lips, eyes, and brows all, you know, in two days or right. three days or whatever. Right. But I think it's okay, you know, to jump into something else, not that right. long after, you you know, because you might like that better and ditch the first thing. Who knows? Yeah. So you're on machine now. You've been yeah. on machine the last three years. So let me ask you this. Are you doing, because you like hair stroke eyebrows. Yes. Okay. I mean, you like powder brows too, I right? Like powder brows. Okay. But you still like hair strokes. Yeah. So are you choosing the machine now to do your hair strokes with, or I'm are you still going back to the hand tool? I'm, I, I use the hand tool a lot. I like it. Um... But some people, you know, they're like, I only want to do machine hair strokes. Or yeah. Some people will yeah. hate them. I am I think when I master the machine hair stroke a little more, I'll love it. Okay. You know. So you haven't quite mastered but it. I'm like, mm. So what's your struggle? Like, like are your I lines having, coming out a little shaky? Like, what's going a, on? Yeah, I was having a hard time with in a sunlight text on somebody's face. Yeah. Um, I was having a hard time. I was like, I feel like that line's just not, like, it just looks so squiggly. It's like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then I switched my machine. Are you using a single needle? Yes. What size? You know what? For practicing, I don't even know what I'm using. Okay. So I'm like, if I'm doing this on somebody's face, I'm going to be like, this is what I'm using. Exactly. But I'm like, practicing, I'm grabbing whatever I have. I see first. Well, you, you know, you got to use single needle, but not really. I mean, you really can use like a bug pin, like let's say a 0.203 yeah. tight liner, mm -hmm. right? And get super crisp, fine hair strokes. Right. But the most of the industry doesn't know that, or they're not taking advantage of that yet. I I, I see them trying, you know, picking up the smallest single needle yeah. like available, like a point two zero. And to me personally, I think that's just a little bit too small. Yeah. And the single needle is the hardest to master. So imagine a single needle, but you get a three. It's like a single needle with training wheels, right? Yeah. It's a little bit more st stable. Yeah. It, it's uh, it shows less quiver i, I yep. guess is the way to put it so well when i switched over say i use rotary and coil when i switched over um i was using the zion to try to do the hair strokes and i love that machine i use it daily yeah just having issues i'm like i feel like these don't look great maybe it's just me i'm gonna quit <laughs> um i tried the bishop v6 the v6 and yeah i was like holy shit like these look good mm -hmm. i can do this mm -hmm. that was a recent finding so I'm going to feel brave and, and try it on some people. The V6. Just, it, yeah, it was weird. I, I don't and know. what's so funny, Tars, a lot of people don't like the Bishop V6 for hair strokes because it's, it's, you know, it, it weighs a little bit more. It's, it's a, a powerful machine, yeah. you know, and you know, the sh it's not this delicate thin pin type that, you know, the PMU industry is used to for hair strokes. Yeah. So it's got a little bit more oomph to it. But I didn't think to use it, you know, I was yeah. Like, mm -hmm. 
but I, I, I'm desperate. I like the Bishop V6. It's a good machine. It's nice. Yeah. And I don't, I, you know, vibration doesn't bother me. It's I never was bothered on me. on coil with Will. That's so it. Yeah. I kind of was used to something a little heavier yeah. and loud yeah. and, you know, the vibration right away. Well, I think I was talking about this with uh, Chris Sanford. He makes the Rook and the manufacturer of the Rook. <clears throat> and it's like, I find the PMU, you know, hair stroke artists, you know, we sell machines. So they reach out to me all the time. And one of the number one question is, vibration you know does it have zero vibration they're look you know you know the, the artist that does the hair strokes they're looking for the machine that has like n almost no noise and like zero vibration and i was at, talking to chris and like okay so if you get into a machine with like zero vibration like if you reduce the vibration of a machine so much to where it's pleasing to the permanent makeup artist do you lose something along the way with power or uh, or anything like that you know and I've got him coming on on a podcast, so I'm not going to divulge like what he said. No, we'll talk about that. But that that's an interesting, you know, that's an interesting uh, subject all on its own. I like the opposite. I don't want like a dainty machine. Everyone wants those, you know, $20 Alibaba pens because like, they're so light and they're yeah. cordless. I'm like, I yeah. just want something I could like, feel in my hand. It's like yeah. substantial. I'm like, like, put your big girl panties on, man. Get a yeah. machine in your hand. Yeah. It feels I, different. Yeah, it does feel different. And I think, and you get used to it just like in time, right? You, 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 it, you get used to it. But I think, uh, the, the noise that a machine makes doesn't have to be loud, like a coil, but um, for instance, like the Valhalla or the Bishop Phantom, they make a little noise mm -hmm. and they have, they have some vibration. Uh, but that's, I think that's your machine talking to you, right? You know, when you, when you can hear your noise, you can feel, I mean, when you can hear your machine, you, you can feel it, you can feel the vibration. That's your machine like communicating. You can hear what it's doing. Yeah. You can hear what it's doing. It lets you kind of know where you are depth wise in the skin and you know, whatnot. So I, I like a little noise and a little vibration with my machine. Mm -hmm. So I wish our industry would kind of get over that a little bit and embrace, you know, a little noise and a little vibration because yep. that would open up their um, choice of machine yep. a lot. Right. I think the grip thing, like, like wanting like the smallest pin. I'm like, I need, I wrap mine. So it's thick. So know, it's like, thick. It's easier to hold. Yeah. And hand hurts but less. you kind of come, you, you don't really come from body tattooing, but I you worked in tattoo shops, but you did work yeah. in tattoo shops and you did, you showed me a tattoo out there <laughs> that <Yes>. you did <laughs> the banana thing. Yes. The so banana you've thing. done some body tattooing. Yep. Yeah. Why? That's I bounced my, you know, like questions off of them like, with the boys at the shop. I'm like, Hey, like I need help with right. this or why is this doing this? Yeah. Cause I didn't have anyone else to really talk to about it. And I always want to bug, you know, people in the industry that I know out of town. I'm like, Hey, right, help me? right, right. So so what about needles? So do you like, are you preferring needle on the bar? You come from a body tattoo background. So are you like a needle on the bar or are you like a cartridge girl? Um, see, I like needle on the bar. Yeah. I would well, say I like prefer it, but we got I'm that very in common. stuck in like the convenience of cartridges. Yeah, right. Which I hate to say. Which is the lazy. whole industry so right lazy. now. Yeah, yeah. But needle on the bar it just feels so much more stable. Yeah. Um, especially for doing outlines for winged eyeliner. Right. You know, right. Hair strokes that I'm trying yeah. to master. Yeah. Machine hair strokes. So I'm very stuck in the, okay, well, I'm just going to throw a few cartridges on here. Cause I'm yeah. doing three different yeah. procedures on this lady and like, you know, switch them out two seconds. Yeah. But I really like, I, I'm going to be better about that. <laughs> and, and set up the needle in the bar. Yeah. Well, I started on needle in the bar and I'm still needle on the bar on like eyeliner and really like detailed work. I yeah. started my girls here on needle in the bar and now they have a hard time with cartridge. And I think, and, and you're right, the cartridge needle is super convenient. It is more expensive. You can get a needle on the bar, each needle on the it's bar. so much cheaper. Like five cents. Yeah. You know, you get a box of like 50 for like 20 so bucks. Like it's more like you have a little more control over it. It's weird with cartridge. I just feel like they're kind of. There's a flutter to them. Yeah. There's a little bit more of a vibration with that needle on the bar. There is no flutter it's vibration. It is extreme precision. Mm -hmm. And with the cartridge needle, there is. Yep. You know, that little vibration, that little flutter. It's working too. It you, makes sense. It makes that perfect flutter, sense. Yeah. Right. But if you didn't start on needle on the bar and you don't have that to reference back to, and all you've ever used is cartridge, you don't, you don't know that you don't, yeah. you don't know what you're missing. I did the brow slayer class with Will and Jen okay. a couple years ago. I'm like going to blame this on him for putting the Zion in our kits. And yeah. I was like, Oh, this is cool. And yeah. cartridges, this is easy. And then I kind of like stopped using that coil machine I had for a, a while. Right. But I had switched back to it for a little bit. Cause I'm like, man, I miss this. I just feel like it's getting in there better. And you know, yeah. 
but coil or needle on the bar, whatever. It's just, it's nice. It's, I, I need to stop being lazy and start breaking down. lazy more. Tara. <laughs> I know. It's like, God. So let's talk about, let's talk about your, uh, well, I mean, let, let's start here. So are you, so you're doing brows. Do you do, you do, are you doing eyeliner? You took Will's class. Yeah, I do eyeliner. You doing lips? Yep. Doing areolas? Not yet. All right. I've well, been working and painting and drawing right. them though. So. All right. It's probably my favorite procedure. Oh yeah. Just because. It's not to love about nipple, you know? They're cool. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and it's, it's, it's just, it's really emotional. Yeah. You know, it's really touching work and it's, uh, well, I paint, I'm an artist, so yeah, I just feel like I, I don't know. I need to be doing it. You'd probably be really good at yeah. it then. Cause you understand the concept of it's been a weird light time and dark for training. So it is, you know, we, we keep getting asked if we're doing trainings and I just decided this year, I'm not going to do any group trainings, um, at the studio. I'm just not, I'm super, you know, we wear our masks and I'm, you know, and following all the protocol gladly, you know, um, but I can't be in a mask for eight, nine hours, you know, talking the way I talk in a class, passionate and like, oh, I'm all over the place and running. And, you know, I got students on models. I will kill over and die. I mean, yeah, the mask, hard. it's hard. I can wear it for a couple of hours and then I got to get out of it and give mm -hmm. myself a break. You know, I was getting headaches and what, what not. I tried to class with it and I, I got sick. Yeah. I, I think I got sick. I know Amber gets, you know, not feeling well after all, all day and yeah, a mask. You guys are like doubling them up and stuff. Being We're doubling safe, them up. So yeah. And I've been getting imagine. tested. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, um, I got COVID in, in November. Same. Yeah. In November. <laughs> yeah. So I had to stay home and, and I got very mild symptoms. It was great. And me and my wife split. I went and out into um we have a little casita and so i stayed out there and she stayed in the house and she didn't get it you know thank god but um so um you know they don't know if you can get it again i don't want to get it again if you can't get it again i certainly don't want to give it to my wife so you know we're following all taking all yeah, the so safety group stuff are kind of group classes are on the back burner but they'll come you know i just think the industry is gonna really you know i think 2022 is going to be like our year, right? That's when the conventions will <laughs> all come, come back, back and all that stuff. And we'll be all ready. So it'll be crazy. But you so know, I, just, yeah, I want to do an areola class for sure. All right. It's on my list. I've just been painting and kind of drawing them and messing around. I well, Michonne just came easy. to me and wants to do one. So maybe, maybe, maybe when she's ready, you know, to do her first one, you could drive up. You know, I and think we had talked about, about that. Like when I, cause I took a training uh-huh girls in training in, okay in florida i remember that eyeliner, yeah was it amber was it with amber amber yeah and okay. michelle was there helping and we were talking about wanting to do one back then yeah. so Did my, my two my two are they haven't done them yet they just haven't asked me i just come and ask me when you're ready to learn them you know but michelle just came to me like a week ago she's ready she's ready <laughs> so maybe you could drive up i would maybe do a weekend together or something we'll, we'll i'll bring in some yeah, a couple too. models and we'll just tattoo some areolas i'm down all right so good so what's your favorite procedure well I have a love-hate relationship with eyeliner. Yeah, me too. I love it when it's done. I hate <laughs> getting ready to start it because yeah. eyes are stressful. Yeah, right. Um, so I, th you know, I kind and of lips are the same way. Lips, you know, I've I've gotten mm. like I've just kind of gotten over gotten the hump with, with lips. I'm like, all right, I got this down. Yeah, really quick. But I still don't. You know? I'm I'm like you. I love eyeliner, but when it's over, it's yeah, like well, during it, eyeliner. It's so unpredictable. People, I don't know. People yeah. in their skin. Um. So I would say, you know, I. I I get asked that by clients all the time, and I always wanted to say brows because I'm, you know, I could do a brow quick, yeah, easy, quick. good, got it. I know I'm good right. at it. Yeah, eyeliner is more rewarding, so our lips because they're a little more difficult, yeah. challenging, I guess. Yeah, to do. Yeah, um, I would say eyeliner just eyeliner. It's satisfying when it's in there yeah. and done. So listen, I had somebody the other day. Um, she said, "Look, you know, I, I, I don't." I, she heard some, some, some trainer, someone I don't know what, but say that you know, eyeliner shouldn't be done on anybody over seventy. Mm. Seventy years old. What do you think about that? I have done eyeliner on a ninety-three-year-old client, and she's yeah. like the best, and her eyes yeah. are amazing. So, well, you know, she asked me, you know, and she, you know, she said, what, you know, what do you think? I mean, should we not be doing eyeliner on women over seventy? And I'm like. Well, first of all, my two nanas would be like telling the trainer, like, you know, what? Yeah. You know, um, most of my clientele nowadays, <laughs> Zambra Michonne stole all my young, cute ones. But, you know, they're all women over 60. Those are my favorite clients. Yes. I know a girl that I used to, used to hang it with. And she was like, oh, I just, you know, I really hate getting older clients. And like anybody even 
It, it was ridiculous. I'm like, those are my favorite. They're yeah. so easy. They're easy, easy to please. Eat really they easy sit to there please. And they just take yeah. whatever you're doing to them. And exactly. It's fine. You know, they're exactly. not calling me in three yeah. days. And if you it piss them like off, this. right? Because sometimes we piss off our clients or clients get pissed off for us for no reason. Mm-hmm. They're not going to go on Yelp and no. social media and try to destroy you. No. Because that's like what happens yeah. with the younger girls. No, I would like, take every older client. I love my older clients. ladies. And I have probably, I have done hundreds hundreds of eyeliners on women in their seventies, eighties. And my oldest eyeliner client I have done, she was 94 years old. It's right up there with mine. Yeah. So I don't understand why I don't understand the reason or the concept behind not doing eyeliner on women over 70. Or isn't that the age group that needs it the most? They can't see no so. more, right? Their hands are shaking. I feel like they're the best. Or the they're easiest the best and on. the easiest. And we're not doing big old wings and thick no. eyeliner for Christ's sakes. We're doing lash enhancements, natural eyeliners, yeah. right? They, they Look, they don't s- swell as much as the young girls, I think. I don't know why. No, they don't. They don't. They don't. They're not crybabies. No. Nope. Like the young girls. I don't know why. I love working on them. They heal great. And they're so happy. And then they send five of their ladies they play uh, cribbage with, Half right? Half of them have had permanent <laughs> makeup from 10, 20 years That's ago. That's right. They know what's going right, on. Right, right, right. They're pleasantly yeah. surprised when it takes you a quarter of the time, that, you know, from the first time they had it. Yes. Day. So I don't know. I don't agree with that. No, but I hey, you know, we can best. all agree to disagree, right? That, and that, there's a lot of that in the industry. So you just tell them to send them my way. It's yeah, sweet. I never get judgy, but, you know, yeah. Was, yeah, we'll send them. Everybody's me. an expert now, so. Yeah, you know. right. Uh, well, yes, I know. <laughs> I know. I see it. Mm-hmm, I just there. stay away from it all. So yeah. But eyeliner. So you're doing big wings? Um, when the eye allows me allows to allows it good. Yeah. That's good. So um, I loved that training for wing liner. Like Amber is a kick ass trainer. Yeah. Um, very informative. I felt like I really felt comfortable right away. Like yeah. When you leave a training, you have to do stuff on your own. You're like, oh shit, okay, yeah. it's, it's time. Yeah, I figure this out and by myself in my studio. That trainer's not there, hovering over me, making sure I do it correctly. Right. I felt super comfortable right away doing the first one at home. Killed it. That's good, you know, man. So yeah, but you seem really confident and like I try. Got your shit together. So well, Amber, choice, you know, yeah. <laughs> so Amber's very first. Amber was with me maybe a year, year and a half doing eyebrows, and then one day I just walked an eyeliner in her room. You're doing eyeliner today? She's like, what? I'm like, yeah, you're doing eyeliner. I a- hear you like to spring things on the I do. I do. I'm that kind of bit. mentor. Yeah, I do. Because if I plan it and they get in their book, then it's a get men- in your head. And they get in their head too much. So, yeah, I just surprised them throughout their whole print, you know, their whole time here. So, and it, and it wasn't a lash enhancement. It wasn't a skinny mini eyeliner. I gave her like a baby wing. <laughs> <laughs> and she was like, so the other day I was just talking to her about her very first eyeliner. I sprung up and she'll probably never forget that the rest of her life. Right. And I'm like, one day you're going to have artists under you and you're going to do the same damn thing to them that I did to you. And you're going to love it. It's going to be great. But she was like, after that eyeliner tear and I went out into the parking lot and I sat in my car and I cried for 30 minutes. I couldn't even drive. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, can you imagine what you would have done to yourself if I had told you you're doing an eyeliner that day? It's like that sometimes. Yeah. Eyeliner is stressful. It is stressful. Wings. It is stressful. People are so weird about everything being yeah. so even and yeah. there's so much swelling. Yeah. Like, Ugh. Yeah. So it's it bothers terrible. me a little bit when the trainers or, you know, artists, you know, really good artists out there make it or even, you know, their own words. It's really easy. And, you know, I don't even use numbing creams. It, you know, that, that bothers me a little bit because I, I, I think everything we do is really hard. It and is. and technical and a, and a lot can go wrong and so, you know I think you have to take it really seriously and it's and it's harder for others harder for some than than others. It's like, more appealing when you tell them it's not hard, you know. It's more appealing. <laughs> it makes you look like a badass. Yeah. But you know eyeliner's not not easy, man. No. And to this day, I've probably done three, four, five thousand of them, and it's still not easy. You got to be on your game, and it's stressful. And Each eye is so different. You are so yeah. different. You never. Know, it's probably different. the most stressful like, thing is you don't know how that client's going to react or how that that lid skin. I mean, yeah. on any given moment, they can puff up, you know, or um, stay pretty good, or you know, they start crying like a baby. Yeah, <laughs> you never know. Yeah. But all right, so that's cool. So all right, so let's talk a little bit more about your tattoos. Yeah, what about them? <laughs> okay, so a couple. Well, I'm a studio here and all of us, you know, have tattoos and piercings and Amber and Michonne have, you know, bright red hair, bright green hair. And we've had a couple older ladies walk in and 
I think one one um, incident I remember. I think Amber was out at the front desk, and uh, I was consulting with an older gal, and she pointed right at Amber and was like, "I don't want her." And I was like, "Why?" She goes, "That red hair and the tattoos. It's just not. Fair. I don't want her." And it really offended me. That's offensive. It's super offensive. Yeah. And I walked her back in my room, and her and I had a chat. You know, and uh, and then I did have a chat with Amber privately because I wanted her to be mentally and emotionally prepared for that. You know, um, that, that that's going to happen. Um, so you have, you know, tattoos on your face, on your neck. There's no yeah. So so Tara, you know, have you had to go through that? Have any oh, of your so clients much. walked in and like been super judgy or decided, OK, I don't want you because of that yeah. or um, yeah. I've had it happen I get a lot of referrals from plastic surgeons doctor's offices one of yeah. my good friends is a doctor who does medical aesthetics I get a lot of referrals from her and I don't really post pictures of myself on my work page I just never have I don't know it's just not my not my jam is it because of your tattoos and you're afraid you're gonna get um, judged I feel like a little bit maybe but mostly yeah. I'm just like but that's really sad and here's that you know oh, that's sad to me though so I know. spring it on them when they see me and if, you know, they don't like it they can kick rocks <laughs> so you're into the like the shock factor yeah, yeah let's just shock them with it yeah okay so yeah I've had it happen um I'm never nice about it you're so, not nice no, about it there's no reason to so be. you get I'm, kind of mouthy I'm and... my own boss I'm not going to get this isn't Applebee's if I'm rude to you you're not going to tell my name. so I get so I asked you this out here so you're a little edgy you could be a little moody little a little bit okay <laughs> has it gotten you into trouble I mean in the PMU industry happened. well yeah, no names you know. <laughs> <laughs> I um will call people out for stuff if it yeah. needs to be done yeah you know and I'm not going to be more quiet. people should yeah they should yeah you know? they should you know, call people on their shit. If and there's a, there's a, there's a way to do it professionally and there's an asshole way to do right, it. So right. So I'm kind of borderline both. You're um, in between professional and asshole. I'm really like a <laughs> testing, <laughs> testing the waters there. Um, yeah, I've gotten, you know, I don't, I think I've gotten myself in any trouble just because I'm like, who am I in trouble with? Yeah. But you can know? you handle, so, so if you call someone out and they turn right around the and they come right back you know, at you, can you handle the heat? Know, I'm like, I know my work's good. I know, you know, I don't do anything sketchy. I don't, you know do these sketchy trainings or anything. So I'm like, what are you really going to say? Yeah, No, you're you know, solid. You're solid. You, yeah. You know? Yeah. You're solid. So, it, you know, a lot of stuff, I think people will say, Oh, you're bullying that person now. You know, it's like calling somebody out for their stuff. Yeah. You know, or doing something the wrong way or like, you know, working in a gross way. Like that's not bullying somebody. Like right. if they're tattooing on a pillow, you know, you're telling them not to, and they're going to argue with you yeah. about it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we've got, you know, look, the industry has definitely its fair share of like soldiers, you know, that are out there calling, you know, people out, you know, Will Anthony does, you know, yep. <laughs> he gets into trouble sometimes, you know, and I used to, you know, um, I used to, you know, I've, I've had my fair share. I've typed and deleted many times because I'm yeah, like, right? it's not worth it yeah. today. My whole thing is like, I told Will, look. In the, the minute you read something, your emotions are super high. Like you're super angry. They're super high. And your, your fingers, you just want to go right to the keyboard. I said, Will, you know, walk away for a minute, you know, let it, you know, calm down. Let and it marinate. Yeah, let it marinate a little bit, you know, then sit down. And look, there's nothing wrong with engaging someone, right? Especially if you right. have a difference of opinion. And I think that's maybe what... I dislike, I'm going to ask you what you dislike about the industry the most. And what I dislike about the industry is probably what I like about the dislike about the world right now is you can't uh, agree to disagree. You can't right. have a difference of opinion, debate a topic, but do it, um, professionally with kindness, a, a nice tone in your voice without offending anybody, you know? And I, and I, I think the industry would do better, grow better. We would evolve better. We'd all probably be better if we could debate our differences, talk about our different opinions without the, f the bullshit that ends up happening. Right. The, th th then you end up getting bullies drama. and the drama people get mean, um, blocking. And it's like, I just, that's just not me. I am not that kind of person. So I don't understand it. I don't understand it either. Right. You know, I'm not going to sit there and argue with somebody who thinks they're right when I know they're doing something wrong either. No. I'll just be like, all right, yeah. you know, cool. Yeah. Right. Back right. up then. Try right. to warn you. Right. It's just the energy. Well, for some people, they have the attitude, well, it's better to be right. You know, I'm yeah. happiest when I'm right, you know, and they I just... don't like being wrong either, but I also know well, when I'm wrong and I'm like, oh, yeah, right, I was yeah, wrong. yeah. 
oh, I'm wrong a lot, yeah. you know? So, I mean, we all are as humans. We're right a lot. We're wrong a lot, you know? And then on subjects, there's, and on some, some subjects in PMU, there's no right or wrong. It's not black or gray. It's just, there's a million ways to do a lot right. of things and it's all right. Except for sanitation. Except for, yeah. <laughs> Bloodborne pathogens. Yep. Except for sanitation, you're right. There's no black or gray no, there. There's no that's that's it. Otherwise Is that your pet peeve in PMU? I would say so. That's your pet peeve. But that probably has a lot to do with early training from Will and it being drilled into my brain yeah. and then working yeah. in tattoo shops too. And so I'm like, if I see something off, I'm like, ugh, it's disgusting. Yeah. Say something. Yeah. Well, I don't get why the training I don't I don't understand. I, I know what your pet peeve is. I know you're gonna <laughs> right lack of education lack of education yeah and 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 that's probably why there's a lot of um you know abuses uh out there going on when you're talking tray set up and cleanliness and sanitation it's so skipped over you're it's so one, skipped over one day classes with like 50 people yeah you know, it's why would that be the focus you want to get them in their teaching them what you're yeah. trying to do it's yeah like, it's on the back burner and yeah you see these people tattooing and on blankets and, you know, lash setups and right. touching their face or using right. like food handler gloves. It's right. gross. So this is a controversial subject. So we'll both be a little careful, but, um, <laughs> is it, and I've had this conversation, you know, with other people. So the, you know, there's trainers that do the training circuit. Some of them don't even really do clients like, you know, much anymore if they do very yeah. little, but they travel. And they are setting up their trainings all over the country, all over the world. Right. You know, and they're doing, you know, massive amounts of people and they're making great money. And some of these trainers are good. I mean, they're mm -hmm. skilled, right? They're doing, they're doing great work. You know, their procedures are great, but they're, they're in and they're out and they're in and out. So I guess the question is, are, is it the trainer? Are, are they the ones responsible um, for all this bad training and, and, and cross contamination issues, or is it, the technician that's I love bought question. that seat. She went to that class. Everybody's guilty. Everybody's guilty. So you think everybody's are, guilty. Are, are the major issue. So how do trainers that want to keep doing this, right? They, maybe they love it. They love being on the road. They love traveling. They love teaching. The big crowd maybe excites them. They do got something to teach, but I agree with you. Um, some, some, some important things are not being instilled in that student. And maybe that's the only class that no one shortcuts, artist, you know, like how does the trainer fix that? No shortcuts. Like don't skip over things that are super important, like teaching, you know, proper trace it up. And so maybe know, they should to, have a section in their class 100%, and where it, they're it, teaching it might, that you, you're a little one day class you're doing. Maybe it needs to be two days, you know, <laughs> What if they did something like this? This was an idea I had. Require them to do bloodborne pathogens online before before they go to the cl yeah. the, the class. You don't want to take the time to do that in person, right? That, I mean, which I had a I had, I had a great idea. Tell me if you think my great. You can yes. don't lie to me. If no, you don't think my I, idea I is good, but you know, because you know, I know some of these people that travel all over the place and doing these big classes. But you're right; they're in and they're out, and they're only teaching the procedure. Mm -hmm. And um, there's no regulations, you know, with permanent makeup. So for some art technicians, that can be the only class they ever ever take. Um, what if the trainer does, does their thing, they teach their eyebrow, their eyeliner class, they got 50 people, but then, then they give them all like a free code, uh, to take an online bloodborne pathogen cross containment class that that trainer filmed, recorded and put together. That's what I was just going to say. That's a good idea. Pre-record this. Yes. Have them watch it before they make it to your little class. Yes. You know, have a lot of that work done already. And then maybe they have a year access to it, you Tara. Know? So when they leave the class, it's like you've got access, a year access to a bloodborne pathogen class, cross-contamination class. Then there's nothing on the trainer. Then if, if they're still being a dipshit and tattooing on a pillow, then right. it's their fault. You yeah. know? You, you so did. all your trainers, you take my idea and just run with there it. There you go. Yeah, it's free. There you go. <laughs> I won't accuse you of stealing my idea. It's a good I think idea. It's, it is a good idea. And I think that will solve the problem. Solve the problem, yeah. I think. Right? Because you don't... You, I mean... You don't want to stop these trainers from doing their jam. No, do it. Just exactly. Do it, just do it the right way. Yeah, like, exactly. You stop. I mean, you're these people that are just getting, you know, messed with on the boards because they're posting pictures of their work or trying to get advice. And then you see the disgusting setup that they have going on. You're like right. traumatized at like all the issues in it. Um, all of that would stop if you, <laughs> for the most part, if for you just train them correctly to yeah, begin with. You know? I agree. But 
people take it. You know, I, I didn't know anything about permanent makeup when I first started and I still researched. It's yeah. Like, don't take the first, you know, first class you see. Yeah. With like a pretty flyer, like really look into it and like, right. And like, look at people who have trained with them and like, look yeah. at their work and like read reviews and, and do your homework so that you're not stuck crying about this $5,000 course that you paid for that right. you feel like you're so, you don't know what to do. I didn't feel like that at all because I, I did my research right, on Jane right. when I first But in our class. industry, they want things fast and quick, yeah, and right? Like and it, it, no, it's not like that. And, you know, and that's where the body tattoo industry is a little bit different, right? It's not like that in body tattoo. And, I no. mean, you pay your dues, man. Yeah. You get into an apprenticeship, you know, 18 months, two years, a year. And it's you know, rough. And it's rough. You know, I did an 18-month apprenticeship here at the Skin Factory under Eddie Lynn, and it's rough, Do you know? Um you know, yeah. And in and, and permanent makeup, they just want everything really fast. I mean, some people, you know, they get, they take a class, a couple day class or a week class, they get licensed. And within that year or, you know, their training in that same year, which maybe some people. You haven't even seen your long-term results back yet. Like your color boost, you know, your. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You don't yeah. know what that, that work you did six months ago looks like. Yeah, well, and, it, and that's what totally screwed LI pigments. It really messed with LI Pigment's reputation because when microblading hit the scene five years ago, maybe, somewhere around there, six years ago, somewhere around there, I mean, you just, oh, all these trainers teaching microblading and they barely had six months under their belt and they were buying LI and giving LI kits and they were telling all their students, add on gray to everything because you know that'll make it not ash out we make it not ash out way too deep yeah instead skin. of addressing their depth and yep. their technique and the angle of the needle just add just slam a bunch of ungray slam a bunch of orange and all your pigments for every client and and what ended up happening you're talking a couple of years of that all of a sudden all these orange red eyebrows start producing and and it's and, and it's li pigments and we had to go out there and you know, put out fires and address it. And, you know, it wasn't fair to, fair to LI. If you're, if you're getting weird results like that with LI, you're just not using it correctly. You're not using it correctly. Yeah. Right. Do you okay. use LI? I don't yeah, even know if I I've ever asked LI. you. Okay, cool. I do. Well, I do too. As a tatter of fact, I, so. I do too. I, so. <laughs> <laughs> I use, look, I use LI. Some people, you know, they get, I didn't know I was going to be a distributor or have a store or anything like that. It was not on my radar at all. Uh, but I had been using LI for about six and a half years and I was a trainer. And there was no Facebook, no social media, no nothing back then. So everybody found me word of mouth. But I was a big trainer in the United States. And um, and I went to, you know, people would email me, what do you use? Well, I'm not telling you. That was me back then, right? And I'm not, yeah, that was me, I admit it. And of course I used LI, but I wouldn't tell anybody what I used, my secret sauce. So I was like, well, you want to learn? You're like, you can come take trainings with me, you know? And so I was just training a lot. And um you know, my six and a half years after using LI and training, I just get a phone call from LI, you know, and uh, asked me if I wanted to, you know, train on her pigments and maybe sell them. And first I said, no, <laughs> I was like, I was really nervous. I'm like, mm, no, mm. I, you know why I said no. Well, you know, one of my friends asked me, why did you say no? What the hell is wrong with you? One day your hand might be shit. Your back's going to go. What are you going to, are you going to pay your bills? What's wrong with you? And I'm like, I thought it was going to really mess with my authenticity as a trainer, right? I just really did. Like you're pushing a product. But like it's, I was pushing a product. But it's not if, you, if I'm you know. making money off a product, but I, I happen to also use it, believe in it, they're going to think I'm, all, I'm pushing a product. And I was so proud of my training. You know, I was a rebel artist, trainer. I didn't follow the rules. Um, and so I, I had a struggle with that. And uh, maybe a week later, I ended up calling them back. I'm like, look, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you'll still have me. <laughs> and so, um, yeah, so I went into that with, you know, a six and a half year love, respect and relationship for the line. And then I got to know the people behind the line and they are mother daughter. And it's a super cool company, you know. Yep. They're just a bunch of nerds. I've never had any issues with LI, even, no. you know, and I'm seeing it. You know, most years, people have it. Now, yeah, most like, people have it. I think the people that have the the percentage is small. Quit over modifying things. Over modifying usually it's or too shallow. Yeah. You know this whole trend of going too shallow. You know, and it's a big trend right now. They're not wanting to put the pigment down in that upper dermal layer because they're afraid of going gray, things yeah. going gray or things you know too deep. But 
Look, a, perf- a pigment's going to perform at its best in that upper dermal layer. It perform it doesn't perform as well when it's superficially implanted, and it doesn't perform as well when it's too deep, right? So you end up with two different issues when it's too deep or too superficial. So you want to put it right sweet spot in that sweet spot, that upper dermal layer. Yeah, but people are afraid of the sweet spot, Tara. I don't know why. It's I know <laughs> it is sweet there. I don't know. Anything else you want to talk about PMU? Oh man. I have to decide now. No, I don't know. Well, I like being asked questions a little bit. Are better. we miss? Are we missing anything, Kelly? Yes, Sharon. How she got into hers? <laughs> oh, oh yeah. How did you get into permanent makeup? Oh, that's a good one, Kelly. Well, I got into permanent makeup before I got into body tattooing. Okay, so this is a time in my life where. I was a cocktail waitress on the strip wearing a friggin' dress and high heels, believe it or not. <laughs> it was. I was at TI, Treasure Island on the strip. But I was not in a good place in my life. I was probably on a bad path. Dark, dark, right? Not good. I was a depression, just all kinds of shit going on. Not good. It's off about those high heels. Yeah. Hey, girl, <laughs> snap. You hear that? You hear that, Olivia? <laughs> snap, girl. Mm. <laughs> Took me about three months, and then I was like all over that casino <laughs> carrying, you know, tray load of drinks. Oh, so man. yeah, I was all over the place, but it was good. It was good, but um, and there was just something cool and exciting being a cocktail waitress on the Vegas Strip, right? I'm from a small town in Maine, so and I'm a lesbian, you know, and so and I looked like a little boy. <laughs> so the other cocktail waitresses showed me how to put on like well, lip liner, <laughs> yeah, lip liner, and do my back then we wore lip liner, you know, so. So anyway, I did not have good brows, right? I lost a lot of hair. And so I always had my, um, my eyebrow pencil like in my back pocket. Like it was always in my, on my thing. And don't, don't mess with my eyebrows. And I had a, a, a friend, you know, a gay guy friend. He would always like to, you know, when we go drinking, <laughs> he'd like to smudge him off. I had and, a friend like that. Yeah, mess with me. And I'm time. like, yeah, I was like, I'll, I'll kill you, <laughs> mm-hmm. man. You're like, smear my eyebrows off one more time. You know, it's like my face. So I was always a freak about my own eyebrows. And um, so I, ha- I, ha- I wanted to get out of cocktail and get back to art. I was always an artist. I was born an artist. I drew portraits, painted like you, little kid, yeah, I do portraits teenage too. years. Yeah, me yeah. too. Spent you know my whole childhood, teenage years doing that. Got away from it, got into a dark spot, moved to Vegas, cocktails, no eyebrows. <laughs> um, heels and a dress. Heels and a dress. So I thought I wanted to be a makeup artist. I didn't know permanent makeup existed. Didn't know it existed 22 years ago. So makeup artist, why not? Right. So I went to esthetician school. I'll be a makeup artist. And then I'll move to LA because there's lots of pretty lesbians in LA. And then I'll learn like movie set makeup and do like the, you know, gun wounds and like, you know, all that extreme stuff. That was my plan. But I get into esthetician school and there's like this older lady just retiring, retiring from PMU. And, uh, this is a long story. I got to make it short. So anyway, when I wanted, I was like, what's that? It's permanent makeup. You mean I can tap my eyebrows on? Okay. I go to her house with my mom. My mom comes with me. She never cleans me. She's in a bag. You know, she gets out this bottle of pigment, doesn't draw nothing on and just lays me down on her, uh, lazy boy. <laughs> you know? Love that. Nice and comfortable. Yeah. She did put a trash bag under my head <laughs> and she tattoos my eyebrows. But when I sit up, I got one arch higher than the other and she kept trying to fix it. And I was getting frustrated. It was my face. So I asked her, can I? So she gives me a machine and I rounded out my own eyebrow and, you know, and try to fix my arches. I was telling Callie the other day when it healed, it all healed out because <laughs> it wasn't deep enough on my own face. But anyway, that's when I knew, you know, I looked at my mom and I'm like, mom, this is for me. Like, I need to be doing this. Like, I, I want to do permanent makeup. I think I could be really good at this. And I think, you know, oh, maybe. Go get me a lazy boy right now. Yeah, exactly. Go get me a lazy boy. <laughs> <laughs> and that, that that got me on my path you know I went and did an apprenticeship and it sucked you know I was allowed to go once or twice a week for six months and I didn't I, you know I wasn't really good at cleanliness so I, I had the basics down but you know and uh three years into my permanent makeup career I got into a body tattoo shop and uh you know and then got a good tribe of PMU artists around me and uh there you go and then here we are and here we are yeah so Love that. yeah that's how I got started so, so before, before we go, we do have a lot in common, you and I, 
Like, I don't know if we look like we we're would have badasses. A, yeah. Well, I don't consider myself a badass. Shh, it's okay. We are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I really don't. But, um, but uh, so you like pink. I like pink. Pink's Who would have thought two color. girls like you and I would like pink? I love it. It's my favorite. Mm, right? Yeah. Okay. I love pink too. But I like it like up against black. Black like, and pink are the best. Yeah, I like like pink and like fucking baby blue. No, my mom's bridesmaids dresses were like really kind of not the normal. They were black and pink. Like they were cool. Like, they were cool. And pink it's got to be a certain kind of pink, right? Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Yep. Like a mm, pink. Yep. Yeah. I love pink. Best color combination. Yeah. Me, black and pink. I love that too. All right. And what else? We fish. Yep. I, I grew up I fishing. Fish. Yep. I don't catch up. You, you catch these like big ass fishes. Monsters. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Mo- I watch that show on, Mon- that on Monsters on National Geographic I sometimes. I need to be on that fishing. I yeah. Swear. Yeah. That's good. Do you eat your fish? Depends where I am. Um, a lot of, uh, there's a lot of wild fish and you can't keep those. Oh, so do you catch and release? Uh, yeah. Catch and release. Sometimes I'll keep a uh, hatchery fish. Salmon. When I salmon fish, I keep the salmon. Oh yeah. Salmon's delicious. Yeah. But, um, steelhead, I'll, I'll usually release it. Okay. Unless I want to can some stuff okay. up. Okay. Good. All right. And the other thing, uh, we're both uh, believers. I love Justin Bieber. <laughs> Me too. I love him so much. I know. He's so sweet. <laughs> I know. I know. Uh, and sometimes I get embarrassed that, you know, some of my friends make fun of me, but I love um, if you Justin Bieber. If you say you don't love him, I just assume you're lying yeah in denial because i don't know how you can't love justin bieber so no i love justin bieber whoever says they don't i right. am a believer and um you know his new clothing line drew house right you can't get that shit anywhere i have been trying and trying and trying can't get it it's all sold out when you go to his website and i wanted a drew shirt so bad so for christmas cat had to go on she got me one for christmas we're not gonna we- ask how but she had to go on eBay. It was like 300 bucks. I think they retail on a store for like 150 It's so worth it. Yeah, it's so worth it. It's still, it's a t-shirt for $150, but it's, it's your t-shirt, but it's the Biebs, yep. right? He's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. So she did, she found it. So they're selling them on eBay for like 300 bucks. Yeah. Probably more now. Yeah. Probably more now. So I got my Drew I'm House so shirt. i you for that. I know. I'm going to take a picture of it. A little jealous, but... Yeah, I'm going to do a selfie with it on. I hate selfies, though. I'm not good at selfies. Tar, you're so good at selfies. I see your selfies Thank online. You. Yeah, yeah, but you take pretty selfies, um, and my I selfies actually... are not attractive. Love love a good selfie because you're in control. I was working out at the Brow Project in Dallas with Nicole, and uh, her photographer and video dude was there, and I was like, okay, I hate this. I hate everything about this right now. She's like, you have to get your pictures done. I was like, What? You know, I just wasn't prepared. She told me before, like I, before I was out there, I just wasn't prepared anyway. I don't care. I'm never going to be prepared for that. And, um, I was just standing there so uncomfortable. I got the pictures back. I'm like, man, the only one I like, I'm flipping the camera off. Uh, oh you know, yeah. Like, yeah. If yeah. you want to use that for your site, you know, I think that's the one, you know, right. Older, but, right. Yeah. I, I selfie. I'm like, can I just do this myself? I'm not good at selfies. And then, you know, so do you think, so some people, so what do you think about, like, I feel stupid posting a selfie of myself. I think everybody, okay, when I post a selfie of myself, I think everybody out there is going, oh my God, she's posting a selfie of herself. Like, I hope everyone's saying that about me. <laughs> I'm like, good. good. If this is bad, I'm going to post 10 more right after. Yeah, that. right. I know. We were just you know, talking. I a selfie. I mean, I shouldn't care what other people think. We were just talking about that, right? About that song, that lyric. Do you remember? Which one? You know. Oh, you can't please everyone. You can't please everyone. You want to sing it? So you got to please yourself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like, about selfies. Yeah. So that's a song like from the 70s. You can't please everyone. So you got to please yourself. There we go. Oh. I like that motto. I know. <laughs> but I still worry about what people think. I wish I didn't. I, uh. It sucks that you think about that. I wish that I did. Um, I think that So you I wish think- that you'd. I wish I did had, care what people just thought a little, little bit. more yeah. probably saved me. So if I trouble. post selfies of myself on Instagram, if I start this whole new trend, I post like a selfie. You're going to think I'm like stupid. No, you're going to make fun of like me. You're like them all. <laughs> you like, like yes, them all. Queen work. Yeah. <laughs> well, I had to post a selfie with my Drew house shirt. So I probably took like 40 the other day and I hated every one of them. And I'm, I'm, I'm going around the house and I'm looking for hey, different backdrops. I know. But then I go on Instagram and I look at how are everybody else doing their selfies? Like what, what's behind them? Like how they, and I'm, and I'm, I'm practicing my poses, Olivia, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't know. You know, with filters and all the lights we have in here. I'm trying. No excuse. I'm trying. So yeah, I'm, I'm going to post it. I had one that came out pretty good, 
But I look really. It only like, takes one, you know. I know. Hundred pictures. But I'm, I'm looking off to the one. side and like down at the that's floor. Right, you don't even have to look at the camera. It looks a little sexy. Forget My wife was like, "Oh, that's kind of sexy." There you go. I wasn't trying to be sexy though. When you're not trying, yeah, but I don't like sexy. looking at the camera. I need to do one right now. A selfie. You want to practice? Oh God. Yeah, I'm not good at it Get at all. Get a selfie on right now. I've got a filter on for you too. You got a filter on for me? Yep. Okay. 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 Oh, and you got the pop socket. So just don't hold it from down here because nobody, you know. Well, no, because then your neck shit yeah, hold, you shows. Yeah, right. you neck and chin. You just okay. go up a little where's your Where's your button? Right there? It's that middle yeah. dot. So, so, so what's the best way to do it? Just like that. Like that? Look at it. And then do it. I don't like when girls do this. I don't like that either. Just I hate that. Straight. Look like, I just try to look like Me the much. biggest bitch possible. The biggest bitch possible. Just mean mug it. I'll get Olivia in it. Okay, ready, go. Olivia? See, stupid. I no, see it as stupid. See. It turned out good. <laughs> no, it's goofy. Look. No, it's good. Come on, that's, that's goofy. Good. That's all, all right. We'll, pull up. we'll post this for yes. everybody to see. All right. Selfie practice. All right. It's important. Good. All right. You'll get it. You just need to do it more. All right. Well, hey, Tara. Thanks for doing this with me. Did you like it? You were super nervous. I was. And then we didn't think to plan like, oh, well, I'm not going to have any makeup on and my face is going to be all crusty from this removal session I'm getting right beforehand. Yeah. And it wasn't rehearsed. We just sat down and talked about what do you want to talk about? Oh, man, I should have removed these face tattoos right after but you know here i am a little yeah. little swollen and crusty but happy to be yeah. here but you got a good look no <laughs> matter good. what you got going on yeah so Love you enjoyed it here. beautiful studio thank you everyone's cool yeah yeah we got a good we got a good jam good here. vibes good team. it is yeah it makes you not mind having to go to work when you yeah. got a great place it's to very go comfortable to. here which is important like yeah and all the girls are great are stiff, you know? yeah we have fun Sometimes we get on each other's nerves, but that's, hey, it's a studio a bunch of full women. of women. Yeah. It's no, rough. but we really all do love each other. So it's cool. Oh, yeah. So, I just, so, you know, you saw me drinking on my, um, yes. my, my Tatter Effect mug. My girls got me this for Christmas it's and it so has cute. a little love inscription on the back. It does like, cause they love me, but I saw this and I'm like, oh my God, I got to have these for my guests. I got to be like the, the morning show, the today show, you know, with their today Leave mugs, with you know what I'm talking about? Right. So I ordered 30 of these, uh, 30 or 40 of these. So, but they didn't get here in time. So, but I'm going to send you a Tatter I'm Effect mug. I'm so excited about yeah, it. Yeah, all my guests are going to get a I Tatter Effect mug. You got a mug thing? I just had the conversation with Callie on the way here. We were stopping at Starbucks. I'm like, I want that mug up there. Yeah. She's uh, like, what's up? I'm like, I just have a thing for coffee cups. Oh, that's funny. Like, Do you like this one? I love it. Yeah, okay. The neon vibe. Maybe yeah, that's right. right. Okay, so I'll send you one. Best name, too. Tatter Effect. Love it. Couldn't get what I wanted. Couldn't get the second one I wanted. Couldn't get the third one I wanted. I think this was like the fifth <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Good. Okay, me too. It's grown on me. It grew on me. But so, hey, I just want to thank you. So you train. So let's just give yes. everybody your credentials. So Tar Smith, she is in, where's her camera? Right there. That's your camera. <laughs> train yeah. on a lazy boy. No, you tra- no you're a good trainer. Yes. Um, I've trained with Girls Inc. I've trained with Jen Boyd, Will Anthony. And you do training. So if someone wants to come train with you, they can train with you. And I'm still taking trainings. How do they contact you? Uh, My Instagram is Tara Smith PMU. Um, I guess Facebook, if people still use it, it's just Tara Smith Cosmetic Tattoo. All right. Good. Yeah. And if they forget or can't find you, you guys can contact us. We'll put you in touch (laughs) with Tara. But yeah, if you're down in the Northern California area and you want some beautiful PMU, Tara's your girl. Thanks. All right. So again, (laughs) thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you're awesome. All right, guys. So we are going to wrap this up. Tara, my guest. um, So thanks for joining me. And we will see you next time on Tatter Effect. Take it away, Olivia. (laughs) 